The National Broadcasting Company presents Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 2. Before we raise our curtain, we'd like to take time for a small speech. It amounts to this. Thanks. Thanks very much for your many, many very wonderful letters in praise of our opening play, Long Distance. Bowing to your wishes, we promise we'll repeat it later on in this series. Tonight's play is titled Ground Floor Window. It was written by an extremely talented young author, Ernest Kinoy. With Bill Redfield starring as Danny and directed by Harry W. Duncan, here is Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 2, Ground Floor Window. I've been sitting in this ground floor window of ours for 23 years. Yes, ever since I can remember, I've watched the girls playing potsy on the sidewalk, the boys playing stickball, dodging the cars, shooting marbles in the gutter. I'm 23 now. 23. It was six years ago that I first saw you, Ruth. You were the new upstairs tenant. There was a big yellow moving van, the furniture, your father managing everything. I remember the first words your father ever said to me. The first words your father ever said to me were... Hey, you. You in the window. This 791. Uh, I... I it's... said, is it 791? Uh, no, I... he's asking him, mister. Uh, he's dopey. Yeah? What do you know? Yeah, he's a regular goof. Just sits there all the time. I can't... See? Like I said, uh... he can't even talk straight. Yeah, it's 791, all right. You're moving in, huh? Yeah. Say, uh, the goof there, he ain't dangerous or anything, is he? Him? Nah. He can't even get out of that chair. His ma even has to tie his shoes for him. No kidding. Yeah. Okay, Ruthie, this is the right place. We're home. What's wrong with a kid in the window, Pop? Never mind now. Go find the super and get the key to the apartment. He looks so funny. Go on, you heard me. Find the super. <laughs> All afternoon, I watched your father and another man carrying furniture and trunks into the house. It was dark before the truck finally pulled away. The kids on the block were shooting bottle caps under the street lamp. And the ice cream man had been around twice. Danny? Danny? Getting late? Let me fix you for a bit. Oh, no, Ma, not yet. I'll stay up a while. You had a long day, Danny. You should rest. Ma! All day you sat by the window. Let me alone, will you? You want I should get you some ginger ale? It's cold in the ice. I, I don't want nothing, Ma. Just leave me alone. So you'll call when you want to go to bed, all right? All right, then? Oh, yeah, Ma, all right. Tap, tap, Shirley. Tap, tap, Shirley. Behind the garden. Hello? Huh? Hello? My name's Ruth. I moved in today upstairs. Oh. Uh, I saw. Hey, do you mind if I sit on the stoop by your window? No. What's your name? Dan. What's wrong with you? You make funny faces. Well, I... I can't help it. Why didn't you answer Papa when he asked you a question this afternoon? Uh, I have trouble talking sometimes. Oh. Can you walk? No. Were you run over? No, I was born like this. I... You ain't really dopey, are you? No, it's just I was born w with... That lady in the blue dress, she's your mother, ain't she? Yeah. My mother died last year. She had double pneumonia. Oh, that's too bad. Hey, there's a quarter in the grate. Can a doctor do something? For me? Yeah. Well, my mother took me to the clinic when I was four. They told her they couldn't do anything. That's awful. What is it? Well, the doctor said cerebral palsy. That, that means something isn't there in the part that tells the muscles what to do. Oh. <laughs> that's what makes me make funny faces all the time. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Oh, I don't mind. You... You won't laugh at me, though. No, I won't laugh. The rest of the kids on the block do. I 
I'm used to it, I guess. They call me Dopey Dan. That isn't fair. It ain't your fault, is it? No, it isn't my fault. Ruthie! Ruthie! Look, Papa, I gotta go upstairs. I'll see you tomorrow, Dan. Good night, Ruth. Who's that you're talking to, Danny? Girl from upstairs. The one who moved in today? Uh Uh-huh. She should shame herself with such a dirty face. Her name is Ruth. Such a nice neighborhood this used to be. She looks straight at me, Ma. So? She looked at you. You want I should put you to bed? Oh, no. No, that's all right, Ma. I I want to sit up a while longer. You go ahead. I want to think. I watched you grow up, Ruth. You washed your face now, and soon those long black braids gave way to a sort of soft tangle around your face. You went to Douglas Junior High School with the kids from the block, and after school you used to sit on the high brownstone stoop just outside my window and report on the day's activities. The teacher don't like me, Dan. Right in front of the whole class she said I didn't do my homework. Well, did you? Well, not exactly. I tried to... You went to the movies instead. I saw you go by. Well, Skip asked me to go. I don't see what good algebra does anyway. Did you have a good time with Skip? I guess so. We had a soda after. You've never seen a movie, have you, Dan? Well, Ma was going to take me once, but she couldn't get anybody to carry me. It was a swell picture. I'll see one someday. Uh, what do you do when I'm in school, Danny? I don't know. Watch the street, I guess. Don't you read? Well, I can't turn the pages so good. I, I used to have a teacher come twice a week, but... Not anymore. Hey, I know what. I'll read to you Saturday afternoon. I've got to read Ivanhoe for school anyway, and I just as soon read it aloud. Hey, Ruthie! That's Skip calling you. I'll let him come over here if he wants anything. Hey, what you doing, Ruthie? Just talking. So don't be dead. Skip Parsons, you shut up. Oh, that's all right. Sure, Danny don't mind, do you? No. We're old friends, ain't we? Never mind, Skip. You shut up anyway. Oh, girls are crazy. Ain't they, Danny? Uh, I... See? Danny agrees with me. Why don't you go away, Skip? I'll go when I want to. Say, Ruthie, uh, all the kids in school are going up the river on the day line Saturday. You're coming, ain't you? I don't know. Won't cost much. Look, I'll tell you what. You come with me, and I'll get your ticket. Well, I was going to read to Danny on Saturday. We're going to Bear Mountain. Joe Barker's father's giving her hot dogs for the whole bunch. I don't know. It sounds swell, Ruth. Yeah, it's a lot better than just sitting on a stoop reading all afternoon. I don't know yet, Skip. I'll let you know. You went to Bear Mountain with Skip, Ruth. I wanted you to. Skip was supposed to be very funny. He had an imitation of the way I talk and how my face moves. I never saw it, but all the kids in the neighborhood laughed every time. Saturday afternoon, I watched the little kids unscrew the top off the fire hydrant and run around under the water. Hey, Billy, George, the top off the hydrant. Come on! I thought of you on the boat with the wind blowing through that short tangle of hair. I think I enjoyed that trip more than you did. You came home way after 12, alone. The night was hot and the whole street seemed to be weighed down under a smothering blanket. You sat on the stoop, and even in the dark, I could tell you were crying. I am not crying. It's just hot. Well, I didn't mean anything, Ruth. Didn't you have a good time? Sure. Well, how come Skip didn't bring you home? Your father will be awful mad. I don't care. Well, what's the matter? You are crying, Ruth. It's nothing, Danny. Something happened on the trip, didn't it? No, no. It was Skip, wasn't it? Oh, Danny. He made... Fun of the way I talk. I tried to make him stop, but he wouldn't. Uh, he only did it because they all laughed. But, Danny, it was awful. You mustn't mind. I hit him, Danny. I slapped Skip as hard as I could. And then I ran into the cab. Well, please don't. I, I didn't I, come I, home with him. I couldn't stand it, Danny. I will never talk to Skip as long as I live. Oh, they don't mean anything, Ruth. It's just that I'm different. Now, don't cry, Ruth. Please. <laughs> Is that you, Ruthie? Papa? He's been to Connolly's bar. I saw him go by around ten. Ruth, answer when your father calls. Yes, there. Papa. Danny's drunk. What'll I do? 
Didn't I tell you to get home before midnight? Papa, I... Didn't I say before midnight? Didn't I? But, Papa... Mr. Gower... What do you want? Uh, uh, I... Well? Ruth was here, talking to me. No, Dan. Oh, she was, huh? She was talking to me. She was... She was back around 11. Why, you lying, half-witted criminal? Papa, I don't have... dare talk to Dan like Watch. that. Why, you little... <gasps> Ruth! <laughs> Go on, get upstairs before I beat your head off. M- Mr. Gower, you, you shouldn't Listen, do that. Listen, you overgrown idiot. If I didn't know that your mama has to even wipe your nose for you, I'd... I'd... Stay away from Ruthie, see? I don't want her hanging around her. Uh, well, just stay away. Was Gower coming home drunk again, Danny? <laughs> Danny, <laughs> you're crying. No, Ma. What's the matter? Can I do something for you? Danny, what are you crying for? Nothing, nothing. All right, so let me fix the pillow behind your back. It, it's all crooked. Ma, stop it. Danny. I can't stand it any longer. Let me alone. Let me alone. Let me alone. <laughs> But my mother fixed my pillow and brought me a glass of water and wiped the tears out of my eyes. I sat at the window staring out at the street. That night I dreamed I could walk. I was with you, Ruth, walking by the ocean. We were running hand in hand, sort of floating over the sand. Running. Running. And then suddenly... I fell. I couldn't get up, and you looked down at me and said quietly, Cripple. I was screaming when I woke up, and my mother came running. She insisted on sitting up with me all night. I didn't dream again. After that, you didn't come every day. You had a job after school, and I'd see you go out in the morning with your books and come back late in the afternoon. You weren't really pretty, I suppose. You always looked tired, and you took a long time climbing the stoop. Ma, me up and throw me down. Hello, Danny. Isn't this a scorcher? Oh, hello, Ruth. <sighs> you tired? Sometimes I think you're lucky, Danny. I get so worn out in the store, I fall asleep over my homework. It gets tiring just sitting, too, Ruth. Gee, you know what I mean, Danny. Here, I'll straighten your pillow. Oh, it's all right. Let me fix your collar, Danny. It's all twisted. Oh. There. I couldn't reach it. I'm sorry, Dan. I didn't mean to... You know... Oh, it's all right, Ruth. I never mind when you talk about it or anything. You're different from the other boys I know, Danny. Not only because you're... Crippled. It's all right. I mean, it seems like I can always talk to you. Papa doesn't seem to understand. Honest, Danny, sometimes I think you're all there, there is on the whole block that's real. I mean... I don't know. Uh... I... Danny, why is it you seem kind of good? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you seem so, so old. Old? As if you knew what was right. Oh, Dan, will you, will you always let me talk to you? Ruth. Ruth. I get so tired. I need you to talk to, Danny. <laughs> You sat on the stoop with your head in your hands, looking like all the sorrow in the world. Then you looked up and smiled at me, and I could see tears in your eyes. And I was glad, Ruth, glad you wanted me to listen while you poured out the troubles of your 18-year-old heart. The war was over now. There was a big welcome home streamer stretching from our house across the street to 794. Dad! Danny, look who's back! Look who's back! It was Skip Parson on the sidewalk at the foot of the stoop. He stood looking up at me with his feet apart, leaning on a sort of steel cane that reached up beyond his right hand and clamped his arm by the elbow. Hi, Danny. Hello, Skip. Swell to see you. Come on up and sit down a while on the stoop. Sure, I got nowhere to go. Hello, Skip. Hiya, Ruthie. I guess I kind of joined your club, Danny. 
Uh, there. I'm sorry, Skip. Well, I still got the leg, even if it is all scrambled up. How you been, Danny? All the same. You look great. I, I mean, except for the leg. Yeah. But the surprise is Ruthie. She wasn't pretty when I went away. I'm not now. Sure you are. Isn't she, Danny? You ought to know. I leave it to you. Uh, I guess so. Never mind. What are the ribbons for, Skip? Oh, free beers, mostly. They're good for at least a quarter of Connolly's. Didn't you notice me weaving? That's a combat infantry badge, isn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you a secret. It's the only one that means anything to me. The other stuff is to sweep beautiful ladies off their feet. Why didn't you write you were coming? I didn't think of it. I guess I should have. Well, you got home just in time, Skip. Ruth graduates high school tonight. Hey, that's swell. Congratulations. But you should have told me. I'd have brought you a present or something. Maybe flowers. The dance sent me flowers. Why don't you go with her tonight, Skip? Mr. Gower's working. Ruth won't have anybody there. I wasn't asked. Don't be goofy. I need somebody in the audience to clap when they call my name. Oh, horny handed Parsons, they call me. How's this? Oh, <laughs> I gotta go get dressed now. Oh, your flowers are swell, Danny. I'm glad. In about an hour, Ruthie? Maybe a little longer. I'll try to hurry. Well, I gotta shave. See you later, Danny. Have a good time, Skip. I saw you go off together to the graduation. It was almost dark and the street lamp went on just as you passed under it. Oh, Skip was wrong. You weren't pretty, but the light caught the white flowers in your dark hair. They danced when you tossed your head and waved to me. That's the Gower girl going to graduation. Yes, Ma. I think her father would come home to go with her. He's working. Working, not working. A girl graduates only once. Who's that with her? Skip Parson. He came home today. I already heard. A shame his legs, such a strong boy. Oh, she looked nice, Ma. She ought to. You made me buy expensive enough flowers. So much money for a little girl like that. Oh, Ma. Still, you're right. The father wouldn't get them, and on graduation, a girl should have flowers. They were pretty. She had them in her hair. Lucky Skip came home, so she had someone to take her. Everybody's got his troubles, and the whole world, nothing but troubles. Alice, Alice, so, uh, you want ice cream the next time the man comes around? <laughs> You came home late. I heard you both laughing quietly as you turned the corner. And when you passed under the street lamp, I saw the flowers in your hair wilted and yellowing. Skip had tucked one of them under his infantry badge, like it was a buttonhole. Dan? Hey, Dan? He's probably in bed. Danny? What do you want to wake him for? I promised to tell him about graduation. I'll give him a break. Let him sleep. But I promise. It'll keep till morning. Danny won't mind. Gee, I wish he could have been there. Why, didn't I clap loud enough? Don't be silly, Skip. It's a... Oh, Danny's been something sort of special to me. Oh. Skip, it isn't fair. Why should he be like that? It isn't fair. Hey, hey, take it easy. It's graduation night. He said he was glad you went with me. Sure. Danny's okay. Say, say, you're not in... I mean, Danny... Is... Oh, Skip. Uh... Ruthie, let's walk down to the river. It's early. I can't. Pop will be home from work soon. He'll get mad. You've got lots of time. After all, you only graduate high school once. Well, I really promise... If Danny was up, he'd answer. But Pop Your old that... man doesn't come home till three. What do you say? All right. Oh. What's the matter? My flowers came loose. Here, hold my purse. Oh, they're drooping anyway. You might as well throw them away. No, I'll fix the pin. I want to save them. There. We can make it to the river and back before your father comes home. <laughs> I'd heard you when you called, Ruth. I don't know why I didn't answer, but I waited up till you came back. I wanted to be sure you got home safely. I was afraid your father would come home and find you still out, too. But he didn't. It was a week later when Skip came by again. He was wearing his old suit from before the war, but his arm was still braced against that twisted steel half-crutch. He pulled himself up the high stoop. Wow. It's quite a climb. Mind if I sit a while? No. Oh. Danny, you've got to help me. Me? 
I know I got a nerve. All afternoon, I sat in Connolly's bar, trying to figure out how I had the right. What's the trouble, Skip? Well, remember when I was a kid, I used to call you Dopey Dan? Yes, I remember. Ruthie socked me for it once. I was imitating you on the boat coming down from Bear Mountain. She hauled off and sucked. I knew about it. Well, kids are like that, Danny. You know that, don't you? I didn't mean anything special. I was... I was just, you know... Th there isn't an excuse. I well, I don't mind anymore. Look, I know it isn't anything like it. I mean, my leg and your trouble, they aren't in the same class. But this morning I saw two kids following me down the street making... Like my brace with a stick. You'll get used to it. No, that isn't what I mean. I try to figure how, how I come off to ask you to help. I wouldn't have had the nerve, but Ruthie told me you always were a friend. Ru Ruth? Yeah. I need you, Danny. You're the only one who can help. Uh, I... What's the matter? Nothing. You see, it's her old man. He won't let her see anybody. He goes crazy every night when he's working because he can't tell where she is. She's scared of him, Danny. Well, well, what do you want from me? I gotta see her, Danny. I just gotta. She's gonna meet me over at the park. She told her father she's gonna read to you. He'll ask you, Danny. You've got to tell him she was with you. I didn't know what to say to Skip Ruth, so I stuttered like I always do when I get confused. Skip sat by the window and told me how pretty you were. You weren't really pretty, Ruth, even on graduation night with my flowers in your hair. I wanted to tell him there were lots of prettier girls, so many others. He could walk, he could find the others. Why did he have to come to me? Why did I have to help him? You stopped by my window before you went to meet him. You sat on the stoop the way you used to. How do I look, Dan? Oh, fine, Ruth. Just fine. I'm going over to the park to meet Skip. Yes, I know. Oh, Danny, I love him. What's the matter, Danny? Skip's a good guy. He wants to get married and go to California. He knows a job out there where his leg won't matter. Only it wasn't for Papa. Well, can't you just go anyway? Yeah, but Skip and Papa don't like each other. Danny, why is Papa like he is? He's not really bad. He worries about me. That way, you know. And Danny, he don't need to worry. Why can't he be nice, Danny? Why can't he? Uh, Ruth, I... You've always been a friend, Danny. i always been able to talk to you. Remember when I said I wanted to talk to you always? Ruth, Ruth I can't even talk right hardly. Even if you couldn't walk or anything... You were my very best friend on the block. You were my best friend in the world, Danny. You could tell what I was thinking. You knew it without my saying anything. That's what I love about Skip, Danny. He's so gentle and sweet. Like you. Sometimes I think that you're the... No, only... Ruth. Oh, Danny, I'll write you off. And... You're, you're not going tonight, are you? Tomorrow, maybe, if Skip wants. I... I hope you'll be happy, Ruth. Bend your head up, Danny. Well, your face feels hot, Danny. Are you all right? Have you fever or something? No. No, I'm all right. Your forehead's so hot, Danny. Tomorrow I'll say goodbye like always. Just like I was going to school or something. But you'll know, Danny, that it's... Ruth, don't. Goodbye, Danny. Oh, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to Danny. <laughs> Somebody's bothering you, maybe. <laughs> Danny, what's the matter? Why are you crying? That's no way for a man to act. A, a, a man? A man who can't even button his shirt or tie his shoes? What kind of a man is that? Danny. What kind of a man that drools and stammers when he talks like a baby? <laughs> Danny. Your mom isn't. Dead. You're my son. 
I lived in the house with you for 23 years. Oh, please, Mama. That skip part. He went two years to a war. But Danny, your war went on from when you were born. I know. I know. You're Ruth. She's going away. But you've still got to live. Oh, Ma, for heaven's sake. Oh, she goes away. Danny, it didn't take courage to live 23 years sitting in a window watching the world run and play games. A man? Could there be more of a man? Mama, I love her. I sit by the window and watch the street. All day I watch the girls jumping rope and the boys playing stickball. You wrote me, Ruth, but I didn't answer. This is the letter I write in my head. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't put it on paper. I'm 23 years old. And I can't hold a pencil in my hand. That was Ground Floor Window, Attraction 2, Radio City Playhouse. As written by Ernest Kenoy and directed by Harry W. Junkin. Bill Redfield starred as Danny. And other members of the cast included Bernard Grant, Marilyn Erskine, Anna Karen, and Arthur Q. Bryan. The music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shield. Radio City Playhouse is supervised for the National Broadcasting Company by Richard P. McDonough. Next week, the Radio City Playhouse presents Of Unsound Mind, written by our director, Harry W. Junkin. It is the story of Myra, beautiful, gracious, charming, and without a soul. It is the story of Caleb, her war-wounded husband, and of Jeff, the other man in her life. We sincerely hope you'll be with us next Saturday when we bring you Of Unsound Mind by Harry W. Junkin. Attraction 3, Radio City Playhouse. Robert Warren speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.